Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. Another tutorial about glass, but this time this is a subscriber request. This one was asking about how to shatter glass. So I am going to demonstrate to you guys how to take these items and shatter them using dynamics. So I'm not going to be doing these guys. So I'm going to control H and don't forget that you can download this file at academicphoenixplus.com and then you can follow along. So what I want to do is shatter these two objects. Now, lucky for us, if we go over here under modeling effects, there is something called an effect and we have an option called shatter and then go to the options. So we have three options. We have surface, solid shatter and crack shatter. And I like to go to edit reset settings just to make sure nothing has been changed. So the first one is called surface shatter and it's going to give us five accounts and it's not going to extrude anything. And then we kind of will see what it, what we get. Um, as you can see, it will triangulate surfaces and a couple other things, but let's see what happens. And you'll notice that it made our objects triangulate. But if I select different pieces, open, I have my original, I'm going to control H my plane geo and just kind of look at the surface shatter here. And it separated it into multiple pieces. So very quickly we can grab a plane that is shattered. Now I'm not a big fan of tessellated. So let's take a look at some attributes. I'm going to go ahead and undo until I get my plane geo back. Let's open up the options again. And this time I'm going to turn off triangulate and um, keeping it everything in shape. So I'm not putting any dynamics on it at this time. And let's go ahead and maybe give it a little bit of an extrusion. Extrusion means that it's going to, well, extrude a little bit. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of extrusion. And I'm going to hide my original mesh and then create. All right, so it extruded it. And I still have multiple pieces. Notice how cubic it is now. So that's one of the issues or why we would like triangles is because it will give us more sharp edges. But just to demonstrate that it does create extrusions just like we asked, and it also doesn't um, tessellate. So again, those are options for you to just kind of debate with and then go from there. This one doesn't have much geometry. So if I go to the effects and let me reset my settings here, turn off, well, I'll just, and then create, you'll notice that it doesn't really have enough geometry to be able to do anything so it only has one gigantic shard so that's not very helpful but again that's kind of important to remember so if I go ahead and maybe start ad adding some geometry here so again I'm just using the multi um, create let's right click object mode uh, insert edge loop tool and then we can try again let's delete the history though and again, let's go to effects, shatter, go to the options, create, and then it will shatter the pieces for us. Let me hide the original cube. And there we go. Notice also that because we didn't extrude or anything, it does split it into multiple pieces, which is awesome. But the issue now is that it's hollow. So that's also something to keep in mind in when you are trying to shatter something. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. Let's go to shatter options. We can change the amount of shards. So I noticed that it always created five. If you wanted more or less, you can change it into shard counts. And we want it smooth and so on and so forth. So everything's looking good. Let's move to solid shatter. So solid shatter, we'll leave it at default. We're going to go ahead and uh, it's got very similar attributes, except it does have an edge jagginess. I, and we'll keep it at triangular just because I think we have no choice but to have triangles to make it look good and it also says remove interior polygons but we're going to leave it a default and then click on create and it's going to give me an error it says it may the re, if let me open up my script editor and it says that if you want the shot to shatter it first go to edit delete by type history Ooh, it remembers it has history so let's go ahead and delete the history and let's go ahead and create it's going to think really hard and then there we go it creates a bunch of shatters for us. Again, let me hide my cube. And you'll see that it does create geometry for us. So now we're getting a much more realistic looking object. You may be asking, well, what if I want the cracks to be in a particular way? Sorry, that's not how it works here in uh, the shatter. Uh, shatter will just literally 
shatter it the way it wants and it's unpredictable sometimes but if you want different results you kind of have to mess around with it so let's see what happens if we just shatter it again with the same attributes like what we did before and again you're going to notice that uh, the shatters are going to be just a little bit different i'm going to go back into object mode and now the shattering is different so if you want different shatters you may have to either if you want specific shatters you were go you're going to have to probably shatter it yourself or just keep reshattering until you like it all right so that's uh that's shatter for you solid shatter again let's delete the history effects shatter options um, again, if you want more pieces, if you want a little bit more jagginess, let's see what happens. Um, let's hide the original mesh because that's kind of driving me crazy. And let's remove this just so I can demonstrate what it looks like. It does say to extrude, so maybe I'll just give it a little bit of extrude, just a tiny bit, and then apply. We're now going to get chunky stuff, which is cool if we want to blow stuff up. And you'll notice that now it's got depth. So instead, it's not, well, it's still hollow, but now it's got a little bit of an extrusion. So this one gives you a lot of really cool options. Uh, surface shatter is more about probably like a plane, but this solid shatter will shatter it for you, give you, make it solid, or if you wanted to have it very thin, so that uh, hollow and then have a little bit of an extrusion so everything will look pretty decent. So now we have kind of like almost like a sculpture. Um, so now we have a couple of pieces that have been uh, shattered and um, this one seems really small. It's kind of weird. All right, let me undo again. Kind of having fun shattering stuff here. So that's kind of like the way that works. Let's move to crack shatter. So crack shatter basically means, well, let's just watch, see what happens. And then it gives me an error again. So let me just delete the history and try again. It's giving me an error. Let's see what it's saying. Let's see. An error occurred while running cracks. Uh, results may is unnecessary. Uh, okay, so not valid. Please select exactly one. Okay, here it goes. So lucky for us, Maya is very smart and says, please select exactly one vertex or CV control. Um, just basically the same thing, control vertex and nothing else. All right, so we'll do just that. We'll grab one vertex. I'm gonna grab this one, create. And then it starts drawing these crazy cracks for us, which is cool. And then we just have to wait and see what it's planning to do. Hopefully my computer will not crash. It didn't, thank goodness. I'm gonna grab my original Geo, hide it. And there we go. We have a very interesting looking object. We have a lot more cracks based on Vertex. It created its own. And as you can see, some of them are all pretty much attached and I've created this abstract piece of art. So let me undo that again. And this time, let's see what other effects we have under crack shatter. So we have a crack count, we have a crack length, we have jagginess, which I'm gonna increase. We can also extrude just a little bit. Um, I don't want too much. And we're gonna keep everything else, hide the original, and then create and see what we get. It's kind of fun just watching this thing do this crazy stuff. Cool. All right, so now we have a little bit of that thickness in there. It's not empty, it hit everything, and it's looking really, really pretty. Pretty cool, and it's a little bit more wacky and uh, kind of messed up, which is great. We kind of want that from our, if we're trying to destroy like a building. All right, so that is the basics on how to quickly shatter an object. It's a lot of fun. If you are interested in actually going in and using dynamics, you need to learn how to use rigid bodies. So I'll show you that really fast. So I do want a little bit of this. I don't really want, uh, I don't want to remove the interior polygons. And then I guess I'll do create with just our basics. So this is gonna give me a couple of pieces like so. Before you run any type of dynamics, you really do need to spread this out so that they can it can calculate just a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to have some interesting intersecting geometry, and then it's going to get mad at you. So just kind of don't get my uh, mad at you. Just do what you can. All right, let's select. Oh, there's another one in here. I'd have to bring this one down. And then I'm going to take this. Let's see. Under effects. Let's go to under fields and solvers. Let's create active body. Boop. Select this. It's going to be our fields and solvers. This is going to be our passive. 
and then we'll rewind and then watch the magic happen. Nothing's happening. So let's see. Oh, it's probably because I haven't given it gravity. I haven't done this in a while, so you guys are going to have to forgive me as I try to figure this out. Let's go to, uh, let's see, fields and solvers, um, gravity. Let's put the gravity on here. There he goes. Boom. And that is how you create. I'm going to give myself more time. And that is how you create a shattered glass. So let me just move this a little bit more to the right. I'm going to assign the glass material here. Let's see, assign a new material, Arnold uh, AI standard surface. There's a preset for glass, so it's up to you which one you want to use. So I'm going to use regular glass and then um, I'm going to give it a little bit of roughness and maybe less weight on the specular and less weight on the transmission. And if you want to, you can give it a little bit of color just so we can tell the difference. Let's render it out, see what that looks like. So it's picking up the glass really nicely. It is a little rough, so just remember that I did increase the roughness. And of course, you can manipulate the IOR if you want to. Again, there's a whole uh, tutorial on how to make glass. So by changing these attributes, it's going to make it a little bit more transparent. And then we can rewind and play and just watch the magic happen. And I don't even think Arnold can handle this, but we can definitely try to see if it will handle it. So let's rewind and play and just watch it try to keep him keep up with it. I'm really impressed with my computer sometimes. I'm asking a lot of it. And there it goes. It's just going to bounce around and so on and so forth. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on how to create uh, the effect called shatter. And then also just a little bit about rigid bodies and how you can get your glass to fall using dynamics. Thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate your support. Don't forget to like, share, and leave any comments. I would really appreciate your support. It helps, encourages me to continue making these type of videos. So please feel free to uh, like, share, subscribe, and um, don't forget to ring that little bell so that anytime I create, I create an, one of my videos comes out, you are more than aware of it. So thank you again for all of your support. I really appreciate you, and I will see you in the next tutorial.